try another channel. Hey kids, I'm here, I'm getting set up. So, yeah, I'll go back to here. All right. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Hi, Paulina. I'm good. Oh, it's been a busy day. Oh, my gosh. I just got your message about the Facebook. Hold on. Uh, volume. Where's my volume? There we go. I have a little bit of a crazy setup right now because my one computer is not very happy with me and I'm taxing it, so I'm watching the comments on the other screen. So that's why I keep turning around, but no worries. We're gonna get to our painting today. And this is my little mock-up. Uh, let me know in the chat if everybody got into, I know Paulina, I have to accept you in the Facebook group. I thought it would be nice to have a Facebook, a private group where I can post like the day's lessons. So the photo and the drawing, if I get time to do it, I don't always have time, but um, okay, let's see. Uh, Paula, I'm trying to find out where is the, um, where is your invite members? Paulina, did I invite you to this group? Oh, maybe I don't have your email address? Let's see. Yeah, I will add you. I'm trying to. How do I, um, do I have your email address, Paulina? Or can you send it on the DM? Let's see, just DM me with it on Instagram. Let's see. I'm not sure if I can set it up without that, but. Oh, let's see. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, let's see, let's see, where is my... Hey Irene, I know you're probably there, and Kathleen, I think you probably got on today. Hopefully you did. And, um, oh, I want to look for, where's Paulina? Paulina, there you are. Look at that Facebook group. There's always something I forget when I'm doing this. Everybody can just try to start setting up while I add a few people. Um, let's see here. Okay, that I don't need. This one. And this is the one that, oh, maybe if I just rewind it. Hold on. Hold on, Paulina. Oh, there it is. Confirm. Okay, you already had it. I don't need your email. I'm good. I got you on there. I had to refresh my page. That's why it wasn't showing up. Okay. Okay. 
And then Kathleen, when you and Irene get the um, the invite from the private Facebook group, it's from Sketchbook Sunday. So, okay. Who else is here? I'm gonna go back over here. What is this crazy thing? Hmm. Oh. Okay. Wow. Let's get started. This is crazy. Okay, so um, in the, on the Facebook page, you should see a couple of um, images that I thought we'd work with today. And let me get the photograph. I printed it on the printer, but I have to go grab it. It's been an incredibly busy morning, so uh, let me just run and grab this. I've been putting out not really putting out fires, but just busy this morning. Very busy. Okay, so I grabbed the photo. This is a photo of the beach at Dana Point in California. And um, what I did was I zoomed in so that we're not gonna paint this entire thing, but I just took out of it what I wanted. And um, so I zoomed in on that, like that. And that's what I thought we would work on so I did a little drawing, which is also on um, Nope, I already accepted you, Paulina, on the um, on the Facebook group, so you should be good to go there. And this is again the image that we're going to use. So when I have a photograph like this from somewhere, and I painted a few paintings while I was here, but you know, you always want to go home and paint more. And so what I do is I'll take various different, you know, mat boards and I'll figure out a composition that I like and then I'll just work on a little sketch on that and that's basically what I did for this and um, when I painted this little sketch I thought this is going to be really hard for beginners so I, I need to try and simplify it even more which we could do a couple of different ways. We could do something like this, which is less, you know, a lot less trees, a lot less fuss and moss. Or we can simplify it down to, we can eliminate the trees and just do this. See, then we don't have to paint the sky or that hill back there, or all those trees, or all these secondary trees over here. So, ooh, that's even cute like that. We could just zoom in on these little figures in the water. So, this is a good way to just figure out what you wanna do. So I think for the beginners today, and I think we have a few beginners in the group, or maybe that want to be in the group, 
I'm kind of liking this. What do you think? Maybe this. Why don't we do this maybe without the sky? It still could be kind of troublesome. Maybe just this part. Why don't we just do this? Okay. <laughs> uh. I think everybody's trying to tie up loose ends today. It's one thing after another here. Got to ask this lady if I can get back to her after my stream. Okay. All right, so I kind of like this. Why don't we try and work on that? And that'll simplify it a little bit. And I have another sketch paper ready. So. Now I noticed I'm getting a little low on my color here. I was trying to um, use up some of the colors on my palette because I wanted to change it around and um, Oops, I moved it over too far. So it looks a little light, but um, I think it's all right. Turn this light on. Let's see who else is here. Ooh, Paulina likes the vertical one more. All right. Yeah, okay, let's do the vertical one. So I'll just take my paper this way. I like that one too. And um, it'll be a little bit of a challenge because, um, let me move this over a little, because, um, I'm going to just fold this down. Let's see what I've got here. That looks pretty good. Actually, I really like this one to show more. But I don't think I can get it in the camera, so we're going to have to work off of our little photo here. And notice in this photo that the sky and the sea are almost equal and we don't want that. So we're going to crop it down here to give it a nice pleasing division. There we go. I think that'll work fine. All right, and then you can kind of see it too. Some days all I, I feel like all I do is tape things <laughs> to my board so they don't, uh, they don't slip. Um, I have the board tilted so the water flows and, um, you know, just got to get a few things on there. Oops, I don't like that. Let's put this down here. Get it tacked on there properly. Well, Irene, um, Irene is in our stream. Um, and Kathleen, and they know this place very well, which is Dana Point, and that's the beach. 
I wish I was there right now. <laughs> okay, so let's do a little sketch. I don't see cat yet. Um, so we'll put maybe we'll put mm, I'm liking that. I think I want to put this up a little higher. I think I'm going to make that mm, let me get my head around this oh, composition quick here. Yeah, that looks about right. Maybe down here a little lower. Of course, you want to try to not erase as much as you can on your good watercolor paper because it um, Kathleen's having trouble getting on. I'll tell her to refresh the page. I think that'll work for her. Okay. So we're going to put up here in the sand this... <coughs> Let's see, we'll put some trees maybe in the background there. We've got our, our um, lifeguard stand here. enough. I'll decide if I need a little more. That's okay. This will be the ocean down here. This one has these funny little kind of like that. And they have steps that come down. And kind of a railing here. Sometimes they have a little flag, so maybe we'll put that in, maybe we won't. So the lifeguard stand is pretty simple. What you want to try and do is just save your highlights, your white, for on top, because that's the lightest part of where the sun is hitting it. And then in the back, you can just be kind of expressive back here. We're going to put in some... Um, you know, some of the trees that grow down in the background there, some of that coastal eucalyptus that smells so good in California. And then we'll put in some of our shaggy palm trees. Mm. Well, why not put a lot of them in? What the heck? Maybe one more going back that way. That looks pretty good. Maybe this one will be like the one that's working. A little larger than the other ones. So we'll have sand here. 
I'll let it beach down here. And let's put some figures in. So these lifeguard stands are pretty huge, and you can actually, some of them you can walk right underneath, so they're large. It's funny, when I think I'm going to have a busy stream, well, I am starting it at a different time today. I decided to start a little earlier for my friends that are in Europe. Um, because it gets pretty late there. And I did hear from a friend of mine in England this week who, um, hopefully she's listening. She couldn't get her chat going, but maybe she will by the end of the program. She's got a lot going on, so I understand if she's not gonna be with us, but let's see. Hmm. Kathleen's having trouble getting on. Uh, let's see. here somewhere. I can send it to her. And let's see. I don't want that link. That's a big one. This one. Bear with me one more second. I'm just... Hmm. All right, well, I hope everybody has been working on their drawing. Paulina, did your um, supplies show up? A few birds in there. And let's go ahead and put a couple figures. Where would they look interesting? Maybe if I put this guy here and put some people walking down on the beach here maybe. 
Maybe this lady with her little dress on is in the water with a little one, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure if I like that. Well, we'll see. Yeah, that looks like a child now. Okay, she's got a big hat. Oh, good, they finally got on. Okay, yay! So, um, so we're doing this beach scene from uh, Dana Point, Laguna Beach, and I sent it in the, um, in the, uh, yes, I'm talking. Can you guys not hear me? <laughs> yes. Turn the sound. There's a little button for sound on your laptop. She may have it. You can so you can push the button and then turn the volume up. Oh, cat's on. Okay, good. Oh, okay, you didn't get your supplies yet. All right. Well, one thing you can do is if you have a paintbrush, which I think you do, um, you can do this in uh, a monochromatic. Just do um, use a cup of coffee and make a strong cup and then like dilute it. So you have three different values of coffee and you can use that to um, tint your, tint your um, sketchbook paper if you want. You can also use colored pencils to add some color. Um, watercolor pencils if you have them. Um, you could do it in pen and ink. So if you, if you take some of your um, ink pens, Paulina, and you can just test them to see if they're water soluble. And uh, a pen and ink of this would be lovely. So you can scribble with your pen and then add water and see if it starts to dissipate there a little bit and bleed. And some pens will be bleed more than others. You want one, I think, that bleeds a little bit so you get some color dripping down from it. Um, so that might be kind of fun until your supplies arrive. Uh, fountain pens are good for that too. Now yeah, that one doesn't bleed very much. Let's see if I have one that, sometimes a felt, a felt tip pen, you know, with a fine point might work. What about this one? Let's see if this works any better. This is one of these um, micron pigma markers. This is archival ink, so it probably won't. Maybe it'll bleed a little. No, it's not really bleeding at all. But it would be good to put in your darkest darks if you didn't want them to bleed. Um, these are fun also with the watercolor um, brush pens. These are not my favorite thing to use. Some people really love them. I do like them for in a pinch, like if you just want to put one in your in your little sketch pack to go with you, um, because you can pick up some color and paint with it. The problem for me is that um, is getting the water to come out. Now this one actually is working pretty good. This is better than some of the ones that I've had and I don't know who makes this brand it just has a W on it but these are good for a sketchbook kit you know for traveling I've used them on a bus before um, when I was touring around Seattle you can you know just add it to your sketchbook supplies if you want and the water comes out okay good so anyway, that's a brush pen. 
So those are some things you can do if you don't have paints or brushes handy. And these you can get, they're really inexpensive. But um, I, I guess I almost always take a, um, you know, in my kit in the car that I always try to keep one in the car is a palette, you know, a travel palette. I have a bunch of different ones of these. And then um, travel brushes, which, you know, I have a bag that's sitting by the door ready to go. And inside is this watercolor paper sketchbook, um, water. tape. Now this is not the smallest <laughs> sketching pack. This is just one of many. Sometimes I have so many that I'm not very organized. I keep a, you know, a little sketch thing. This has got, <clears throat> this is a very old one. It's got a sharpener so that I can sharpen pencils if I want to. Uh, pencils, of course. I have a micron pen in case I want to do some sketching with that. And this one actually has um, one of my travel brushes. This one I got, I sound so fancy when I say I got it in Italy, but um, I did get this one in, in Italy and it's Kalinsky. And this is called a Matura. I don't know. It's hard to read with the glare coming off. Oh, Tintoretto, 1326 Motora Kalinsky, Italy. It's a size 12. And, voila! Look at that beautiful point on there. I don't know if I've used this. I don't know if I've ever used it. It's still hard, like it um, is brand new. But I love supplies and, and especially things for traveling. So these are nice because this you can fold down. You can just put it in this little pack along with your palette. This thing. Boy, I should get organized here. And then you bring a sketchbook and you can bring even a smaller one. And this can go right inside your backpack. And then on the airplane, they're going to give you a cup of water and or you can take a little spray bottle like this sorry like this and put that right into your pack and that's all you need besides a little cup so you can get one of those little fold down little cups or i mean almost everywhere there's going to be a cup someplace for you you can grab one from the best thing is to have your own little fold down one that you're going to have with you all the time. But I mean, there's always going to be a cup somewhere from, you know, if you're on an airplane, they're going to give you water. Um, walking through the airport, Starbucks, whatever. Okay. So that's my travel pack. The other thing that I like to take is a few tissues and um, a plastic bag because, and if, yeah, tissues or a few napkins, something to use as a, you know, or you can even take a little tiny sponge. I've cut up sponges and put them in there as well. And um, the other thing is always throw in a few business cards. So you want to keep that in your sketchbook, sketch travel supplies. And also in your plein air kit, because people will ask you to do paintings of their homes and their dogs and their whatever. The other thing that's nice but not essential but certainly is worth having is a pocket color wheel. These are, I couldn't live with, without this. I mean, I always refer to it when I'm thinking of um, different color studies to, you know, that I want to 
um, use in a painting. And this one is great because it absolutely does everything. It shows you what happens if you add red, if you add yellow, if you add blue, and then you just turn the wheel and it shows you what happens. So if you take your orange red and you add yellow, you're gonna get this. If you take orange and you add blue, you're gonna get this. Um, yellow, orange, and adding white. So when you add white, you get a, um, a tint. And if you add black, you get a shade color. So, and then this also has the value from zero, uh, 10, which is your lightest, and this one goes, you know, all the way down to a value one, which is your darkest. And so you can see how dark things are. And if we held that up to our painting, we can get an idea of how dark is that water by squinting your eyes and matching it to the gray value. And look at how dark these trees are back here. Now, of course, that's a photograph, but which essentially really saturates the dark values anyway but you can get an idea and of course the sand is super light so and then you can also flip it over and this can help you um, figure out a very good color scheme by using either complementary colors which are opposite each other on the color wheel. Or you could use a split complementary where you're using orange, blue, blue violet, and blue green. So it shows you that, or it shows you um, a triad of colors. So anyway, there's a lot of information on this, and I love this one. You should definitely have this in your art supplies. Okay. Last but not least, <laughs> Paulina has my card. <laughs> Paulina, that's so funny. Well, that's how we kept in touch, isn't it? Because we were out and about, and um, I probably was started to show her, you know, paintings or whatever. And before you know it, she's got my business card. This is another little travel set that I got. I don't know what's even in here. Yeah, it's missing a couple because they're somewhere. But this one is, uh, it's not Kalinsky, it's mimicking Kalinsky. Kalinsky brushes, Kalinsky sable brushes are um, really good quality. And they're made with natural hair, which holds a lot of water and keeps a fine point, And they're beautiful, soft, and wonderful to work with. Uh, but these are mimic ones, and this is just a travel set, which um, is really nice to have. And look how that goes together. One of these I did lose on an airplane. It dropped between the seat, and um, I didn't have time to get it before Joe was hurrying me off the airplane. If it had been a real Kalinsky sable brush, I would have waited until every last person was off the airplane to retrieve it, but because it was just one of these, I let it, it's still probably on that airplane beneath, between the seats, anyway. So back in it goes. This is all neat and tidy. And you can do a lot of painting with the four brushes that were in here. Okay. They won't last you forever, though. They'll lose their points, but they're good for now. Okay, let's see. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do, Kat, you missed the beginning. That is perfectly fine because you can always watch the replay. But you see what we're doing. We're doing um, Dana Point. It's near Laguna Beach in California. And... Um, we're going to do this small study to start. I wanted to do, a. I thought I was going to do the whole, like a bigger thing. I sent it, um, K 
Cat, if you're not aware, uh, I did post the drawing, a drawing, and uh, this photo in the Facebook group. And if anybody wants to be in the Facebook group, just put a note in the comments, and um, I will um, add you to the Facebook group. And it's called Sketchbook Sunday. Um, somewhere in here. Uh, da -da. Sketchbook Sunday watercolor group. I thought that was a good way to share the drawing and the photo for the lesson, but if you can, if you know of a better way, let me know and I'll do that. I also thought it's a great place for us to post our paintings that you know that you guys paint so we can see them and if you need help or suggestions you can let me know post the painting and um, we'll see what we can do with it um, some of you have been sending me the <laughs> your paintings on Instagram which I love but um, if you don't mind other people seeing them too um, It'd be great to see it in there. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead. Let's see where I'm at now. Um, switch back to my other page here. Okay, yeah, it's turned into a lovely day here. It's just beautiful outside now. So anyway, uh, we may just do our one painting here. Well, maybe we'll have a time for another one. Okay, so this is the entire sketch that I thought we'd do for the lesson, but we're gonna make it a little bit simpler for some of the beginning artists. Uh, painters and we're gonna chop it down to that so that is the drawing that I've drawn and I think it would look good with a couple more people over here maybe two kind of walking up the beach here let's see if we can get maybe the I really want to give this guy a fishing pole, but I won't. I think this guy here with a fishing pole would look good, except he's walking away. But yeah, that's kind of cute. Cat will like that because she's a fisherman. This guy, let's see, maybe he's just walking along here with this lady. I think in this case it's, yeah, I don't like his shape. I want to change him. Don't worry about putting the figures in right away if you're if they scare you. You can really just do dots and and little wedge shape kind of triangles. Maybe we'll have this guy here. There. They're walking out of the water, I guess. All right. So let's go ahead and try to paint this. I like that there. So what we're going to use is ultramarine blue, of course, and cerulean blue. And <laughs> Paulina, let me know what you think of the coffee idea. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to push. Oh, does that look all right? Yeah, I guess it's okay. <clears throat> So I've got my ultramarine, which is your dark blue, 
I'm going to clean up this palette a little bit. So thinking about this guy, I think I just want to use um, a really light cerulean blue. And in this painting, we'll bring it down, I think all the way to the tree line. And then we'll go in with a little bit of greenery there. And then back to yellow ochre along the beach. And then down to our, our water line. And hopefully I'll remember to stop at the water line. Not entirely, but just so I don't go down there with yellow ochre because I don't want yellow ochre in the water. I'm trying to see if I have, okay. So Kathleen, I'm wondering if um, if you see the chat and if you can comment. I think it all depends if Irene has a uh, Google account and a YouTube. Um, if she signs into YouTube, then she can use the chat. Don't ask me how to do it, but I know there's a way. So I'm just getting my brushes wet here. So let's go with our cerulean blue. Ooh, that's dark. Uh, I'm going to thin that out right away by just getting a lot of water on there. And I may cut around a little bit, leave some highlights around these trees. And as I get down towards the tree line, down here on the bottom. I'll just lightly brush that in because I'm going to switch up colors a little bit. Oops. Not that I want it, I, I just want this to go down a little ways and then I'm going to switch into the yellow ochre. The reason I'm switching to yellow ochre is because the tree line there, I'm gonna, and I might just put a tad of color on these palms here and there while that's kind of wet and it'll diffuse a little bit. And then I'm just gonna keep going here along the edge of this tree line. And maybe I'll add a little more green mix, just a little to this while it's wet. And then you'll get a little bit of a soft edge for these trees. And later we'll probably, well, for sure later we'll add a little more dark as it's drying. Um, just wanna get that in there. And we keep bringing the yellow ochre down Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of, um, I really like the um, raw sienna for the beach. So I'm going to bring that down here. And with that, you can add a tiny little bit of alizarin crimson in there. But you have to be careful because it goes, it's really strong. And so maybe back by the tree line, the sand is a little bit darker. And I'm painting around this lifeguard stand for now. Irene, I remember the first time I went to the beach in California and um, when I came out to visit you and um, <laughs> I had no idea the um, how strong the waves were going to be. I want this to get lighter and lighter here so I'm going to try to pull some of that down out of there to go from light to dark on this sandy spot. 
And I'll just drag that across as I come down there. And then I get my ocean color, which I'm gonna just use ultramarine. And maybe a little bit of this leftover, whatever's on my palette there. I should use a little bit of cerulean blue because that's in the sky. And I'm gonna drag it to get some rough edges which can be highlights from the waves or whatever. A little more cerulean blue. And as you come down the page, you can make it a little stronger. It's gonna dry lighter, so make it a little stronger and some of that blue can go up into the sand well I was able to save a few little white spots so that's all right it would have been better if they were more towards the middle but going off the side of the page probably isn't ideal but because it draws your eye over there and it's a highlight so I'm gonna just get rid of part of that. And that looks much better. And maybe I'll just deepen this up here with a few more. Blue, a little bit more blue. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Everybody's quiet in the chat. No Tom today. And what about my sister? She's on here or not? Nope. <laughs> uh, usually we're kind of a chatty group. <clears throat> All right. Everybody's concentrating really hard, right? Maybe. Okay, so this is in the damp stage now. And it might be a good time to just add... You don't want to use a lot of water on your brush right now because um, because the rest of the painting is wet. But I, while it is wet, I'm going to take this. You can use cerulean blue um, if you don't have the um, turquoise light. And I'm just going to put this color on here because I know we're going to need it there. And it's not going to touch anywhere where the painting's wet. So I just may as well put it in now. If a little bit of it bleeds out, it's no big deal. What's left over on my brush I'm going to add to these trees because it'll look nice up there. Just a little bit. All right. And now's a good time to think about some of those figures. And I'm going to just keep using the same colors because um, maybe this guy will have a, a blue striped shirt on. Ooh, I just made him look like a football player. Kind of big. There we go. And I'm gonna add a tiny bit of red. This guy's shorts. And maybe a little burnt sienna to this other guy here his shorts. Uh, we're going to have the sun coming from, I guess, from the right to left. So 
the right side will have the highlights and the left side will be darker. And Okay, so that's a pretty straightforward first wash. <laughs> Cat's concentrating for sure. Okay, probably the most difficult thing to figure out is how much water and how much paint to have on your brush. And um, so, you know, when you want things to explode and go all, all over the page you want a lot of water and a lot of paint because you're trying to cover a lot of area but after you get to a point where um, you know you're working on damp paper you don't want to add a lot more water but you can add a little bit of color to things and if you don't mind them bleeding out just a little bit that they soften and um, that's just a matter of choice of what depending on what you want in your painting. And, you know, how soft or how hard. If all your edges are hard, it's going to look like, you know, a kid did it with a crayon with hard edges. Kind of cut it, like everything's cut out and pasted on. So, all right. Next, here we go. Let's... Okay, so... I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I want to put in here. Well, how about this little girl? Why don't we give her a little bit of pink? I know you can't hardly see this, but this is on my palette. This is alizarin crimson. And if I want a little pink, I'll just use that, like a, a real thin tone of it. If you really want something to look really pink, super pink, like... Um, I have to get a little scratch paper here. Here we go. There's lots of other pink colors that you can get, but one that I think I have on my palette here, which is like really neon, bright bubblegum pink or whatever, is Opera. And it looks like that, <laughs> which is a fun little color. And so I thought maybe because this is a beach painting, and kick it up a little bit and put, well, maybe I'll just give her pink shorts. How about that? A little pink bathing suit, maybe a strap across her back here. And there. And then her hat can have a a little pink rim around it. Okay. <laughs> well, you are here, DJ. Where have you been? Have you been here the whole time? <laughs> You're not sick, are you? Sneezing and coughing. I think as soon as I started painting the girl with the bikini, somebody perked up here. All right, while I'm at it, let's give her some tan legs. Remember to keep a little sheet of paper next to you so you can um, test your colors on there if you need to. And put some legs on that guy maybe. Okay, we have more to do. I'm just waiting for this to dry really, but I could get my um, I'll get my hair dryer and dry this off before we do the second layer. I'll be right back. And while I'm gone, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can get a better picture.
want to turn off the sound for a sec. Okay, no jokes today, DJ. <laughs> oh yes, we did miss you. I was wondering where you were. Look what I picked from my garden yesterday. They don't have a lot of smell but they sure are pretty. These are knockout roses. And it's my first batch of the year. Knockout roses are about the only kind I can grow here. And that's only if I keep them sprayed for the deer because the deer, um, the deer like them a lot. And they just chomp down the bush. They take the, um, they eat the roses, the leaves, everything, gone. <laughs> it's amazing. So I have to spray them um, like almost every night with deer spray to keep them off. So DJ wanted a picture of the rose. He thought the roses would be good to draw. I don't do flowers. I don't, I mean, I used to, but I don't draw flowers that much anymore. I don't do them, but, um, Unless I'm painting them in acrylic, maybe then it's then it's kind of fun. But um, I don't know. Uh, so I could take a picture of the rose bushes where they are, and I'll send it if you want it, DJ. Okay. Okay, this is dry, almost, pretty much dry. So time for the second layer, which is more of the darks. And I'm going to go with this idea. So we're going to need some green. And this is a green mixed with burnt sienna and ultramarine. And it also probably has a little bit of um, cad yellow in there. Or yellow ochre. Yellow ochre and um, ultramarine. Okay, let's show you some color swatches. So, um, actually, maybe I'll use a little burnt umber. Burnt umber or uh, burnt sienna. This is a burnt umber. And to that, let's add a little bit of ultramarine. And look at that pretty, it's kind of a, just a, an earthy green color, which works nice with those palm trees in the background. And if you want to get creative, you can even add a little bit of cerulean blue here and there, and then kind of let it drip and bleed and run around. And see how the cerulean blue, it's more sedimentary, so it pushes away some of the pigment around it. You can even drop in a little bit of water like this with your brush and push it and make it move. But it's best not to disturb it too much. The other thing you can do is take a little um, 
<clears throat> Let's try this Quinn Gold, even though we didn't use it in our painting. It's a very yellow, strong color. And if we add some ultramarine to that, and I kind of want to blend it up. Look at that beautiful green. And that would be good for a tropical scene where you've got a lot of, you know, banana palms and that kind of thing. Banana palms. You know, banana trees with the big, huge fronds. <laughs> banana palms. Ugh. And then if I thin it out even more, you can get a real light, sagey kind of. Well, it's not really sagey, but a lighter green. Um, so anyway, and then with yellow ochre, which is, you know, that's a, it's a very heavy, uh, opaque kind of, if you use it full strength like this, can be very heavy and opaque. And if I add ultramarine to that, again, you're going to get, it turns into like an army green, kind of a, And the more blue I add to it, you know, you can get it to go a little stronger. But it gets a little more green, um, yellow green, blue green. And I hope you can kind of see that. But it has a lot of sediment in it too, so it's it's gonna you're gonna see some of that pigment on the rough watercolor paper separating and that's kind of nice um, so anyway and then if you use this lemon yellow the lighter cad lemon light or lemon you know that's more of this color and you can see mine's already contaminated with some green but if you start with that and you want to add a little bit of burnt sienna or burnt umber you get a really nice beautiful sort of this is nice for palm trees too All right, and then you can always always use um, your burnt sienna with your ultramarine blue back there, and just vary up the amount of burnt sienna you're putting in there to get some of those darks in the background. And I also like the cerulean blue, or with um, raw sienna to get a nice little brownish, greenish. Look at how pretty that is. Isn't that beautiful? And let's try a little cerulean blue with I need some fresh burnt sienna on my palette. Um, I'll just use this burnt umber. But this is also really, makes a really nice, a little more cerulean in there. Isn't that pretty? All right, so thinking about all of that, Let's go ahead and put some trees back here. <clears throat> okay, so um, I think I'll just soften that edge a little bit here and there with some plain water. I don't want it to look too, too heavy. And then I'll go ahead and do some ultramarine and burnt sienna. And as I move across the back end of this, the mid ground here of these trees, I want to 
change the color often. You don't want it to be boring, so as I go along, I can add, you know, especially towards the bottom here, darker color, a variety of color, I can keep adding more. Um, burnt sienna. And the top edge, I can just play with it a little bit with a smaller brush and make a nice edge. And then just keep going across your page and adding color, changing color. And you can leave a few holes in there for, and maybe I'll use ultramarine with a little bit of this lemon yellow just to switch it up here. And then I want to go back to a little bit darker underneath because I want the top of that, of this um, lifeguard shack to be um, accented by a dark behind it to show off the, the, um, the, the sun, the highlight on there. So I'm just playing with my range of um, colors that I just showed you. I'm going across my page. Once you get it in there, you might not want to fiddle with it too much. Maybe as I come over to this side, I add a little bit of red to the mix for some variety, which would be just a little bit of cad red and then bounce back in there with shapes, whatever shapes you want here and there. You want to just make sure that the it has interesting edges, so just go fast and press hard with your brush to get some interesting jagged dry brush shapes where you might need them, whether it's up on top, below. Pull your brush up fast. And then you kind of want to just let it be. In this case, I want to spritz just a little bit on it to break it up even more with a little bit of water. What do I do with my spritzer? And I'm not talking about a drink. Oh, did I leave it? I filled it up and I put it somewhere. I don't know where it went. Well, if you don't have that, you can use your paintbrush. Just splatter a little bit on there. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, well anyway, so there's my background. And um, maybe I'll go ahead and put these birds in with the dark, just a tiny tad of a little bit of dark shape there while I'm back there. And I have that dark color on my brush now. I really want a little more brown. Maybe some of these trees will stand out more than others. and. This bottom part is still wet, so that's going to allow these trees to bleed just a tiny bit. Some of them can bleed and others will be further back. I'm just skipping the brush along a little bit. Maybe over here I add a little bit of dry brush to that area. And after I've done that, I can even take my thumb through there and pull up a few. That was probably a little bit too much, but you can fix it just by softening it with a little water. Just touch that. 
and I'll take a little more. Mm, let's get a little blue, a little cerulean blue, and just hit that again with a little more color. Mess that around. A few scratches. Okay. Now, let's do these trees. Um, so I want to add a little more color to the trees. I'm going to use a little blue, a little cerulean blue, and I'm going to mm, just play with it a little bit with this yellow ochre. and give these a little more weight. They have these fronds, you know, on the bottom and they can be brown, yellow, dark, blue, green, and some of them are pretty scruffy. So you can go ahead and add these palm fronds that, that have, you know, they're, I guess they die off and then you get your gardener to come out and clean up the trees and make them pretty. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm adding the scruffy parts that are underneath to what I have there. And that's gonna give your palm trees a nice look. And if you want, you can even add a couple dots of darker color into that to suggest even a darker shadows and whatnot underneath there. Mm. What I'm doing here with my brush right now are just dots and skips to suggest, you know, maybe a little bit of stuff back here in the behind. And I don't even know what it is, it's just stuff. Nondescript. The sun's coming in, so I'm going to lower my shade here. Everybody's being so quiet. DJ, are you painting? Irene, I'm dying to know how yours is turning out, but I, I know that you, um, <laughs> you're a good painter, so I can't wait to see it. Or whatever you do, it, it always, it's, it's always amazing. And of course, Cat, you're cruising right along. Okay, the shadow side of this uh, lifeguard stand, is, it's, it is in shadow, so I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this purple that I have on here. If you don't have purple, just, just mix up, um, you know, your cerulean or... Um, ultramarine and add a tiny bit of burnt sienna to it, something dark. And um, mostly, you want mostly blue in it though. It's, it's in shadow, maybe a little blue with a little alizarin crimson. That would get you this purple color. That's a little bit too red, what I've got right there, but you just want to indicate the shadow side of this building. And the shadow on this, uh, in my photo is kind of interesting because the light I'm gonna get this a tiny bit wet on right underneath this edge here the light is coming across from the right and ooh, that's too dark it's gonna be a bright shadow so it's lighter on top and goes darker towards the bottom of this thing and into that, I might just charge a little bit of the cerulean. To give me a nice dark shape on that side of the... I'm 
there's bounce light that's, um, you know, under the overhang of this roof, it's, there is shadow there, and I can put more shadow there, but there's also some light bouncing back up under there, <coughs> which is um, making it look like it's going from light to dark on that side of that little edge. So, oh, Kathleen's, oh. Kathleen is sending me Irene's painting so far. Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> Irene, that's pretty. Kathleen, open up her email, and in her email, there's an invite for the Facebook group. And you can take a picture with your camera and post it to the Facebook group page. I just sent her the link for it. That looks great, Irene. Okay, now you have to do the building here, the lifeguard building. Ooh, oh, she's done, is that the same one or is that a different one? I think she's done a couple already. Oh yeah, good for her. That looks really good. I hope she's having fun doing it. I know she spent a lot of time at um, uh, San Clemente at the beach. Sounds good to me to go there. And I'm just adding a little bit more darker there. Maybe a little more the shadow along that edge. And then um, let's go ahead and add some pillars to these posts on here. These I'm just using uh, burnt sienna or burnt umber. Kind of do a little skip and drag with those because they're um, you, you don't want them to look too like too hard. These lines you kind of want them to be a little bit I have to change the music because let's see. I got hit with a couple of copyright claims from the music that I played last on some of the videos, so I have to be very careful not to use anything that YouTube will recognize. Uh, let's see, where am I at here? Brown. Oh, that would have worked. Okay, so um, Cruising along, let's see where we're at here. Let's add a little bit of mm, raw sienna for this beach. The beach, there's things along the beach here. Just little bits of sand and whatnot. We'll get this guy's legs in a little darker. He's been fishing. And um, we need to add a little bit of um, shadow here. I want to pull the water. Let's get a little bit of this um, well, maybe a little bit of this. Um, let me clean off this palette so we can see what we're doing here. I want to create a shadow on the sand the, between the beach and the water. And so the beach, the sand is wet, so it's got a little bit darker value there. So um, the same raw sienna and maybe a little bit of... Um, just gray it down a little bit with a little um, uh, I can't think cobalt <laughs> a little blue <laughs> or you could use a little bit of um, the cerulean I'm gonna just there's 
And then as it goes down into the water, I'll just add a little more cerulean there, a very light wash to blend it in. And soften all those edges. Oh, maybe a little bit more cerulean here and there. Maybe a little bit of wave action there. And skip a little bit and leave some light areas for your, um, you know, in between to show the sand. Maybe this guy's got a little puddle of water up there since he just came out of there from fishing. And I'll soften this edge up here just, just a little to blur that out. And maybe here where these guys are too, I'll just too much going on there I want it to kind of fade away these people it'll look okay once I get them painted in but they're not painted in I'm kind of painting around them right now okay and as I go up into the beach I can add little bits of sand and shadow and whatever maybe I put some Cooler color shadows coming off this building here. And back there, maybe a little bit. There's a dark, um, there's kind of this dark, I know it's kind of hard to see in the picture, but there's like a little dark shape on there, and then you can put in little dots, dashes, and things to suggest uh, something a little heavier in the background and along the beach. And it helps to have a good amount of paint on your brush and not a lot of um, water to do that, to do those little suggestive details here and there. And to make them show up, they need to be, you know, a darker value. So otherwise they're not going to pop for you. And I think this railing will suggest so that a little more. We'll put a shadow under that side of the lifeguard stand. And let's make these people pop because I know they're kind of hard to see right now. Well, if we start getting some color on them, I'm going to intensify this guy's little shorts here. And <clears throat> We'll put a little red along the top of her bikini there. She's got a shadow coming across her body, which I'll just turn into know, maybe her arm. Let's give her a little red. Oh, she's looking this way. Well, he can look this way with a red face, and so can this guy. And my fisherman there, let's give him a, more of a navy blue kind of shirt. Oh, do I want navy blue? No, I think we'll stick with the cerulean. We'll just give him a blue shirt. Maybe we'll add a little red to the bottom of that. And we'll 
we'll give him a dark kind of blue hat. And there's his fishing pole. <laughs> okay. Um, a little bit more jazz back there with the dark brush. Just pick up and it's kind of, um, I had a little bit of that leftover purple in my palette, so I mixed it with the um, burnt sienna or burnt umber, and that's why it looks like it's that pretty purplish kind of color. Maybe I'll add a few more of these little things there. This guy could be a little more exciting. And he needs some kind of hat, so maybe we'll give him a red hat. Oh, uh, we'll give him a red hat. And maybe this fishing pole. I'll just suggest a little bit of fishing line on there. <laughs> I don't know if that looks like fishing line or what, but. Okay, uh, let's see. I think to tie this together, I need a little bit more um, purple, so I'll just mix up a little bit of ultramarine and that um, ultramarine and um, alizarin crimson there. And I'm making a weak wash of it because I'm just going to glaze over the bottom of this. Um, water. I feel like it needs just a little bit of shadow in there and I want it to pick up the purple in the hut, the lifeguard stand, and in this guy's shirt kind of help tie the painting together. <laughs> and maybe just a little bit more over here. And if you really want to get creative you can drop a tiny bit of Cerulean into there. Just a little bit. Okay. Let's blend that out a little. Um, where's my cerulean? Uh, It's nice if you have the um, this um, turquoise light too. That's a nice color to kind of pop in here and there. I'm I'm probably overdoing this right now, but I can soften it out a little. Put a little more purple in there. Sometimes if I look on the screen, it helps me to see what I'm doing here. There. All right, now maybe a few more little details here and there on my little lifeguard hut. I can put a flag in there if I want. Um, there appears to be a line here. No. What I was, oh, I know what I was thinking. It was for the steps of this thing. They have a, if I dare put it in, there's a little ladder here that goes up to the, and so I'll just indicate, oops, a little bit of shadow here under that. And some shadows coming off this guy. Oh, I forgot this lady. I gotta get her in there. And here's this guy's legs. Oops. And that paper 
tell. Let's. The legs typically the faster that you drag that brush on there, the better they're going to look. If you fuss with them a lot, they're probably not going to look that nice. Okay, and I need a nice shadow coming off this, this guy here. Let's get a nice... Uh, a little bit warmer shadow. Okay, that looks pretty good. Maybe some little bits of things down here along the sand. Lighten it up as I go back further. Put a little bit of dry brush in there to suggest the sandy surface and this lady needs an outfit on so I think I'll go ahead and make her a little bit of this pink here and drop in Give her a nice sunny face. This little guy. Maybe she's carrying like a, a toy or something here for him. A little pale and I want his shirt to be this is getting kind of tedious I have to say if you're watching you're probably but sometimes just doing these little details is like that on there okay um, I'm going to blend into that pink a little bit of white gouache to suggest her outfit a little bit better. And now I can take the white, the white, and also, actually I think this is titanium white. I can put a few highlights on these guys. This lady isn't looking too good yet. She needs a little, she needs a little bit of action here with make her hat a little bigger. I'm kind of softening the edges around these people so they don't look so stiff. And, um, you know, to, to really get a nice suggestion of these, these guys, you may have to play with it a little bit. Um, this guy's face is not looking very good. Let me get him a little bit better. But um, if you get this far in your painting, you're doing well. Um, I'll give that guy a face. I don't want him to look too... There we go. Sometimes just mess with it a little bit with your fingernail with um, your brush 
to make it pop the way you want. You may have to fuss with it a little here and there. That's part of the fun. I'm adding just little touches of the Cad Red for details. Um, I think this guy's legs could be longer. I better check the chat and see what's going on there. <laughs> I probably, I think I may have put you all to sleep today. stream yay oh, I'm so excited to see you Anne is my friend in London yay are you enjoying the painting oh you're not painting along okay all right yeah it's a little bit fussy right now I'm not too happy with all of my figures but you know you just have to maybe that guy got a little bit too red um, you may have to just work with that a little bit. You can always um, futz with it, soften things up, add, you know, whatever you need to make your people pop or not pop, whatever you want. Maybe I'll give him white shorts. Okay, and I'll just let him go into the background there. You really just want to suggest the people. You don't want to make it fussy, but that looks pretty good. She needs a bigger head. Just notice that with her the bonnet I was trying to give her, I mean, she needs like hair and stuff or a bigger hat or something going on there. Okay. Well, I know for the beginners it's going to be hard to put figures in, and I'm probably not making it any easier by making all these figures, but, and especially um, with details. I'm just trying to give them like a purpose, like they're doing something, but I think simpler is better and I probably shouldn't have gone crazy here with this bikini but anyway okay so um, the other thing I noticed that I did is this almost looks like two different light guard stands because I left this area white and um, <laughs> that's really supposed to be the background so that should actually have green greenery back there and um, I'm just going to suggest that by putting that back there and trying to blend it into the... Um, it would have been interesting to make it another, another lifeguard stand too, but... And we'll just put some sand shapes there, and I think that's fine. Let's get that going there. There we go. Scrape that out a little bit. And um, just want to blur this lady out a little. She's got this blue. Boy, I'm having trouble with people today, probably because I'm trying a little too hard. I should have just let them be. There, that looks better. I just don't want them so significant in the painting. Um, 
want this lady's face to be there we go a little more red let's give her let's try again try try again you can fiddle with it um, I mean generally you, you wouldn't do that but in this case I think it's it's all right because I just want to suggest them so anything you can do to make it work do it You know, following rules is good for the basics, but if your painting needs something, for heaven's sake, put it in. All right. Give her a little white hat, this lady. I'm still not entirely happy with her. Maybe I just make her go away and just paint right over her. They can just be nondescript figures. <laughs> Maybe that's a little too light. Anyway, all right, well, let's find my um, I think we can splatter in a little bit of texture here for the background with the same blues that we're using in our painting. I've just picked up a little cerulean or a little bit of that um, turquoise and you can put some highlights on things. Maybe I'll get this guy looking decent yet. There we go. And Give him some dark hair. Let's make him the back of his head there. She's looking back at him. There we go. Now we have a story. to see her hand. They're in Hawaii on their honeymoon. There we go. All right, I think I want one more little, one more bird back here. A few birds. And um, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. You know, I had a crazy morning today. So um, I painted this little study, which I really like. I like my people here much better, more simple. Look at how simple than in the demo I'm doing now. And, um, but that's okay. You can see, at least you've seen it in the other version, and the people you can work on and practice those all day long. And these, honestly, I can put back in with just a little burnt sienna and ultramarine and make them dark. And they'll, they'll blend in just fine. If I, yeah, maybe he's got a wetsuit on. But um, anyway, Anne, I wanted you to say hello um, to DJ. Anne is originally from Sri Lanka. So I thought that you and DJ may have something in common because she's visited India. And Anne is trained as an accountant, but she's retired now. Yeah, I think uh, that's not too bad. It's not, it's not great close up, but. <laughs> uh, 
Anne is a wonderful watercolor painter, and she has um, oh, I just noticed a mes message from Kathleen. Anyway, Anne used to paint with me here in Raleigh when she lived here, and um, we used to go out plein air painting, which was really fun. Put a little white on that guy's head. And um, we also painted together in an art group. And Anne was a member of the co-op gallery here, and um, she moved away to back to England. but she loves to travel. She's been uh, many places. And Paulina, Anne, um, Paulina is also in our group and she um, lives in Warsaw. And then Irene and Kathleen are in uh, Palm Desert, California. So we have quite a big group. And whoever else may be watching I'm going to um, you were in Sri Lanka back in, oh, in, in February, right. And she said when she left, um, when she arrived in Sri Lanka, they did scan her forehead for her temperature. But then coming back in March to London, they didn't do anything. Like they weren't checking anybody at that time. So, um, you know, not like now, today. You, at least for a few more weeks, and then I, I think we'll be out of the woods, I hope. At least that's what they're saying. They're kind of changing their tune, I think, a little bit on the virus that maybe they went a little overkill and we can get back into normal life pretty soon. Maybe I'll just put a hat on this lady. I'm not sure. No, that never works. Anyway. I just don't have her head in the right place. I keep messing with it. Well, that's kind of good. These are a little strong. Well, anyway, I'm going to take the tape off and sign it and um, so you can kind of see what the result is. Uh, my The point is not to go on and on and on with a uh, lesson. It's just to give you, at least not that long, but when you're working with little figures and things. I mean, this is meant to be kind of a quick study, but um, I mean, it's going to get boring if you're going to be doing all that time. And I'm not too happy with these figures, but I think after it dries, I can mess with it. Yes, Kathleen, and <laughs> we're all retired now. Uh, she's going to get a little watercolor set because she's been, yeah, Irene's been working with acrylics. So these palm trees, you could put another little layer of a darker, a little bit more darker value in there too if you wanted. For example, you could take your cerulean and just go over that and add a little bit more. Or you can make it, you know, more of a brown or more of a green, actually. A darker green would look good. Just a little more, if you want. Here and there. Palm trees always look good with one little thing kind of sticking up. Of course, not all of them in the same direction. And you can drop little bits of other color in there if you want to, to add sunlit highlights. And I never did put any other little shadows across the top of this um, 
lifeguard stand, but you could do that. You could throw a shadow. And under there, you could throw a shadow and a little more shadow there if you wanted. And then here I'll show you my people that uh, they're too wet right now to, to mess around with, but when they dry, I could certainly go over those and make them look halfway decent. My poor fisherman looks sad like he lost his fish, but... <laughs> no, I use three different size brushes, so I've got a number six. Irene, if you need some brushes and a palette, I will send them to you. Um, this is a 12. I probably use mostly just a, um, a 10 and a 6 because I'm working on a really small um, a really small paper. You know, it's 5 by 7. And these are silver black velvet brand brushes. And I, I really like these. Okay, so let's figure out a place to sign this little this little gem. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. I guess I'll sign it over here. And I'm going to go for the red. Um, DJ, have you been painting? You did some nice paintings uh, this week, or last week. That's my little boy. This poor lady, I don't know. Maybe that looks better. And there's the other one, if you want to try that one later. Um, the silver black velvet brushes, I think I just ordered them from like um, Amazon maybe. I'm not sure. I usually order from Jerry's Artorama, Cheap Joe's, or Dick Blick, or Amazon. I try to shop local when I can at um, Jerry's. So it's been two hours. I mean, I never paint that slow. I, I mean, that is like... That's a long stream for this little tiny painting. <laughs> I guess we did a lot of chatting though. Uh, a little bit of a little bit of everything. So and a lot of instruction at the same time. Um boy, I need a better mat for that. I'm going to cut a new mat this week. This one's gotten really messed up, but I promise to fix this guy. <laughs> you were practicing some boats? Would you like to see one of my... Um, I usually try to show in, in the stream at least at some point in the stream, some examples of really nice artwork from some of my watercolor books. So maybe I'll grab one and share that with you and then we'll wrap up the stream. So grab. Um, Oh, let's 
find a good one. Not this one. Let me look. I'm trying to find something that relates to what we did today. No, not that one. No, not that one. Maybe this one. Let's see. Let's grab this one. This is Hazel's, Hazel Sewen, Learn Watercolor in Painting. And she's a fantastic painter. Here we've got some loose flowers. Boy, look at these simple shapes. I think I showed you her large, I have a larger book of hers. That's an oil painting. But, let's see if there's any beach. Here's a boat. And look at these simple shapes. They're just little, little wisps. And the graded wash, it's almost the same wash. Here it's a little, there's a few streaks. And the whole first wash, it's even actually lighter down here than it is up there. Um, and then she just added these darker tones on top in the second wash. Spade, okay, look at this one. Now, what a striking um, composition. It's very simple, but she very cleverly used Look at this dark against the light. And she's got this big horizontal here, which is crossed over with a diagonal, which gives it, you know, that dynamic kind of the opposites of the horizontal. The diagonal takes you right over here. And then this white brings you back around this little detail into here. There's lots of places for your eye to go look around. Isn't that nice? She calls it a counter change of paper tones against, oh, paler tones against darker tones. Let me turn this music down. Yeah, for sure, she's got a huge counter change here. Light and dark, light and dark, light and dark. That gives it some rhythm, doesn't it? And then, ooh, look at this one. Now this is an oil painting on canvas, but we could do this in watercolor. In fact, we did it um, a few weeks ago, but I love this composition. Let's do it again. And look at the highlights on the water. Imagine how we can do that in watercolor, because this is oil. Ooh, Kathleen's got, oh! Kathleen, did you get into the Facebook page? And Anne, did I send you a, um, 
Oh, wow. Yeah, I got Irene's photo there. Nice. Yeah, everybody put your paintings, your finished paintings on um, the Facebook page if you want to. And Anne, I think I sent you an invite to that Facebook page, but I'm not entirely sure. So if I didn't, I will. So I created a group for our painting group and we can, um, anybody can join, of course. I just, uh, just let me know in the comments if you wanna join and um, follow along. So yeah, Anne, and it's, it's um, Sketchbook Sunday watercolor group. So I'll send you a, um, an invite if I haven't already. Okay, here's another good example of using simple dark values to make a nice composition in your painting. And here she's talking about her color. Like this is just yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, and ultramarine blue. So you can use a very simple color palette. You don't have to have a lot of watercolor paints or any paints really to make a painting. Um, careful use of your color wheel that I showed you will really help simplify and make striking paintings. This one has Indian yellow, permanent rose, and ultramarine blue. Indian yellow is very pretty too. And um, <laughs> Kathleen likes my ring. Thank you. Yeah, I got that out in Arizona. Um, this one has Indian yellow, ruby red, and Prussian blue. This one has cad yellow, cad red, and cerulean. Cerulean makes nice warm browns when you mix it with reds and oranges. Now this one has a color that in it that we were just talking about, and I just showed you the quinacridone gold. And this one actually has quinacridone red in it too. And then for her blue, she used Prussian blue, which is a really strong pigmented blue and staining. So you have to be kind of careful with it. But this is a great book, Learning Color and Painting Quickly. This is a little tiny book. See the size? It's like five by seven size. Um, so play around with your different color palettes. Red, blues, and yellows. Look at this, talk about complementary color. She just used ultramarine blue, aurelian, and violet. So complementary color, the yellow and violet together. Hmm, it's pretty. So don't worry about getting lots and lots of different paints. Let's see what else she says here. Ooh, look at this one. How beautiful is that? We should try one like this too. I think these ones with the silhouette in the back and then the details of the boat in the front are really nice, easy paintings for beginners. And um, those are fun to do. So, with a minimal amount of people at the beach. <laughs> so, so we don't do that again. Uh, I wanted it to be simple today for some of the newbies that were joining us, but sometimes, once in a while, you get a bugger. Here, here's a bugger in her book. He looks like an alien. Um, but anyway... Okay, so who's gonna paint what next? I think your homework for until, what should we do on Tutorial Tuesday? Should we do some silhouetted Venice paintings? Or it doesn't have to be Venice, it can be anywhere. So maybe we'll, we'll try to do that. Let me make a note. Let 
And while I'm doing that, I'll let you look at my, my grays. Practice mixing your colors when you get them. Okay. Kat, how's your painting doing? Are you still here? Make sure to put your paintings on the Facebook page if you can. Load them up there and we'll take a look and I'll offer suggestions when I see anything. Okay, so Tutorial Tuesday. Um, we're going to be doing silhouettes with um, water, maybe boats, or maybe a dock. And we'll have a, a cityscape in the background. You know, I was going to do that today. And I'll show you the painting that... Um, and then I, I saw this beach one, and I thought I'd start with that. But um, what do I do with it? I had it out here. So I was going to do something like this with the city silhouette in the background and then boats in the front. See, and we can we can make it just a we don't have to do the whole painting. We can do part of it. You know, like that. One other thing I want to encourage you to try is to check out your paintings. You can use a mat board to crop them down and look at the different sections to see how they measure up. I think one sign of a good painting is when you can crop it down in different areas and still have a beautiful result. Look at that. And look at that. That's a whole other painting right there. And so if your painting looks out of joint or something looks wrong, sometimes if you just take it part by part and look at it and say, oh yeah, I can see that, you know, one area has either not enough detail or, um, you know, or the shapes are wrong or whatever. Hey Kathleen, I'm, I'm glad you guys liked the class. Um, it was a little bit long-winded today and a little bit boring, I think, but um, sometimes that's the way it goes. We'll see you guys on uh, Tutorial Tuesday. I'm trying to think if I'll do that on Twitch or if I'll just stick to YouTube. I don't know. Well, I'll let you know in any event. And until then, post your paintings and happy painting. <laughs> Oh, you want to do a negative painting. Negative painting is, well, DJ, that's um, negative painting of what? We'll, we'll negative paint around different shapes for sure. But it may not be... Maybe not be the whole painting. But yeah, we can talk about negative painting. We can do abstract paintings like this too that are more, that have more um, of an abstract quality to them. Those can be fun as well. Landscapes are pretty easy in general. <laughs> I get it. Text back. Uh. All 
All right. Anne, I'm glad you could join us. <clears throat> and Kat, are you still there? Kat's probably painting away. And Raul, since it is Sunday, right? And because it's Sunday, guess what I get today? Sunday dinner. Joe's going to barbecue tonight. I'm looking forward to that. Okay, kids. Well, I'm going to let you all off the hook right now. We'll see you Tuesday. Remember to leave the comments um, on my Facebook, on the um, either Facebook or on the YouTube, uh, on the YouTube page. See you later. I'm going to sign off.